<laughs> All right, YouTube. So Mike is just going to tell us, well, wh where are we at, Mike? Cornfield uh, Customs? Shop, yeah, Cornfield Customs in Milford, Ohio. Okay. And then just, uh, we're just going to take a tour. Cool. Just going to wing it. So okay. just tell us what the first two cars here in the showroom yeah, so are. This is my showroom, first thing that meets you. Uh, I've got a replica of a 65 Shelby Daytona. And then a car that I built is the Roadster Indy Roadster. That's based on a 65 AJ Watson car, but it's built to be a two-seater for the street. Mm -hmm. um, and you'd so, ever take it on any like really cool road trips? And uh, That one's not super awesome to drive on the road. <laughs> cool. um, about an hour is about all you get, but we drove it into Manhattan yep. last fall, so that was pretty cool. All right, uh, so let's go out in the shop and see the customer projects. Yeah. This is the main work area. Um, we've got a 68 Mustang convertible that yep. I'm doing a ton of work to. All new sheet metal, new chassis. Looks like suspension. just about everything. Yeah. There's not much. What's even <laughs> what's even original on this car? The doors, maybe? No, they're Dynacorn. <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't know what's left that's original. All right. Well, we'll go to some other projects. Yep. Uh, we've got a 3031 Model A sedan. Um, let's see the passenger side. I built a new Porter a couple of years ago for it. We've done new floors, fixed some of the stuff rails. Raise the 32 rails in the back and tuck the gas tank up real high. That way it looks a little bit more proportional on a Model A. Chopped. Uh, next up's the steering. And finish out the gas tank. And a 34 by window. Uh, started chopping it real heavy. So it's it's a lot of work to get everything cut and put back together. Yep. Uh, so that could be a while. So that is pretty small yeah. <laughs> windshield area, guys. Yep. Yeah, and that, I mean, that you have to cut the header out, cut the cowl out, lay the post back. Oh, the my God. Poster. I mean, it's just a nightmare. <laughs> and you can see the difference. So that would have been a stop door angle. So it's not even going to be anywhere near where yep, it was. Yep, that ain't even going to work. No. So we'll do, we'll finish up the cars, and then we'll look at some of the metal shaping equipment. supposed to do the trunk and fix the floor and now let's redo the floor the trunk firewall any bad work I see and get it ready to go to the body yeah. shop so it looks like there's been a lot of detailing here yeah been it's, trying got to... a, it's got an Art Morrison chassis with a supercharged <laughs> there you go LT4 yeah, LT bud yeah a couple years ago uh, this was the original inner wheel well and they're not symmetrical so I mirrored it and I made that wheel well and then they took it elsewhere to have work done, and it wasn't what it wasn't. they wanted. Oh, so okay. now it's back to be to be redone elsewhere. There's red markings all over the car. Yeah. So, so tell us just briefly what all the markings mean and yeah, what you're like, going to so do. If it circled and stuff, I want like this one. I just want to cut out the bad welds. Um, this one over here, it's real bad. So I'm probably going to replace the majority of the quarter. I mean, you can just see all the red circles. It's going to get like I said, new floor, new trans tunnel. It's, it's a ton of work. All right. Which what other kind of cars do we have here, Mike? Uh, so we've got my Streamliner project for Bonneville. And we've got a 4950 shoebox that's chop channel in section, 32 sedan, 67 Nova drag car, 60 station wagon. I'm not even sure what year the fair lane is. <laughs> so these are just waiting right now. Yeah, so the fair lane I was working on right before I went out of town. Yeah. Uh, the Nova, I'm waiting on parts. I've been waiting on Holly for three months to get all my sensors and stuff here so we can finish it up. Um, yeah, there's just... So this is kind of the back storage room, so yeah. to speak. O overflow and kind of quick turnaround. Like the roof skin shouldn't take super long, so I didn't want to mm -hmm. finagle it all the way up front. And a brief explanation of what this car is and what it's supposed to be doing. Um, so it's a land speed streamliner for Bonneville. Um, I'm going for the, I think it's a 176 and some change diesel record at Bonneville. Um, so this is pretty much just the skeleton, all the suspension and everything. I'm building the aluminum inner airframe structure and then I'll skin it all once I'm happy with it. Uh, so this is not quite to the halfway point yet. Yeah, that's still quite a bit. Everything's just tacked together. Yeah. Yeah, even Clico the clamps phase, just you know we're still designing a bunch of parts but it's kind of kind of on the back burner since it's a personal project yep all right let's look at some metal shaping equipment cool. 
How about this new machine here, Mike? Uh, this is a 2x4 rectangular mandrel bender. Uh, you can see some of the bends there on the floor. Um, you know, we can bend chassis rails the easy way or the hard way. And then behind it is the concept for the streamliner that's in the back so you can see what the finished product should look like. So in this area is all our dirty stuff, you know, uh, CNC plasma cutting, sawing, grinding, uh, manual bending, all that stuff's done back here, tucked away. Our metal shaping department where we've got both our power hammers, wheeling machine, uh, reciprocating machine, beat roller, pen tools, flashers. So all the bodies and body components yep. we make are done in this area. All right, so for those watching at home that don't know what metal shaping means, it's kind of coach building yeah. where you take a flat sheet of metal and you can make it into essentially anything, yeah, right? Any compound shape or reverse shape. So, yep. I mean, you know, every, every body or component you see is a series of shrinks and stretches, so all that is done here, whether it be a fender, a roof, a hood, you know, all of that is just uh, utilizing these machines to make it happen. And then I'm a collector of all kinds of <laughs> Collecting everything. <them. laughs> there you go. Look at that. That's yeah. a nice rear end view. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> we do that practice all the forms. So what is this machine here, Mike? Uh, that's a cube shrinker stretcher. So if you need to just fine tune an edge or you know pull a, a light. Give the pedal a couple of pumps, Mike. Yeah. yeah. So as you step on the pedal that that'll engage the jaws and bring down. And then it grabs. I don't want to get too aggressive with it. So it'll strip the stippling off of it. But then it'll move in and it'll shrink. So simple wheeling machine. Yep. Yeah, and I don't, just I don't do a whole lot of wheeling anymore other than putting form in. That's why the rubber coated uppers in yep. there. Yep. And the reciprocating hammer? Yep. Yep. It's what do you mean? It's a Linux, uh, pretty much, it's similar to a full max. So we were cutting some long louvers for a sprint car team uh, for their, their asphalt car. All right, and what do we got for power hammers? Uh, we've got the Bailey MH19, which is my small one, and then we've got the MH37HD which is the big one, the big and then one. I've got a, a 1909 to 1913 Pettengill number one. It's an original power hammer from... And how about this bead roller here, Mike? Uh, that's a, a Bailey unit. Uh, that was one of the first large, more uh, professional graded pieces of equipment I bought. It's super cool with like all the chain drive and the clip. Yeah, this is pretty unique. Down, yeah. You don't really see them like this yeah. at all. That way you can set the depth and just leave it. Mm -hmm. And let's see, you got a old Milwaukee planching hammer, yeah, huh? One of the originals. This is an original, wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. All right, well, anything else we need to look at, Mike? Yeah, anything you want to look at. I mean, I got lots and of, lots, of, lots of stuff. All right, well, we'll uh, keep looking around the shop and uh, we'll get back to you guys.